the safari is all about the journey and of course while we were on our way to go and find the black rhino we have instead found not three but several giraffe wandering through the open area and I have to say that the giraffe out here really do provide us with the most incredible images they're so photogenic just look at the three of them gathered together at the base of that mountain there isn't that beautiful a whole collection of males females and youngsters are gathered together enjoying their morning breakfast have you seen a black rhino by any chance Here we go, she's just moving the other one, the younger one, out of the way. She just sort of pushed up against it. So you get a lot of that with giraffe and a lot of dominance displaying between the various members of a group like this. Now it's called mock mounting and it's very common between two animals of the same sex. So females will often mount females to show dominance, males will do the same. Males do it more often than the females and it's basically their way of establishing their own hierarchy and they're not particularly territorial in fact they're not territorial at all so any kind of hierarchy or dominance is established pretty quickly and the only time that they will really seriously come into conflict with each other is of course when a female comes into estrus or into heat and the males compete for access to her now there's let's see if we can count we might try and get a little bit closer as well I can see just from where I'm sitting, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven giraffe all together in one group. Spread out a little bit. Let's go and catch up with the closest group up ahead. And absolutely they are indeed taller than the trees. And I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear who that comment came from. Ashes. Ashes, you say they, ta they are much taller than the trees. I spoke about this the other day. Seems like a ridiculous thing to say. Bless you, Senzel. But I'd forgotten just how tall giraffe were up until recently when we were very, very close to one. Here we go. Let's see how close they'll let us get. I know it sounds very silly because we see them every day, but I really had forgotten just how tall they can be up to in sort of record-breaking situations up to around about six meters from the ground to the top of their heads such a sedate walk watch the way that they walk watch the way that both legs on the same side move at the same time very very unusual for most of our four-legged creatures out here to move in that way now Jack you want to know having seen a couple of little ones, how long a baby giraffe will stay with its parents. Around about a year and a half. Bear in mind, of course, that the male doesn't play much of a role in raising the offspring. So it's entirely the female's job. And the babies can stay, if it's a female calf, it can stay for even longer than that. It could actually stay with its mother for years at a time. If it is a male, he'll probably move off at around about a year and a half and then he'll go off and find some bachelors to spend his time with or even actually hang out with another herd they're not as they're not they don't have any kind of strict herd structure they don't have a harem or anything like that they've got a very very flexible social structure sometimes they'll move off on their own sometimes they'll follow on with the rest of the group look at that all those heads and the vast open spaces of the Masai Mara One of them's bending down. Could be to drink. Could also be to, no, there we go. Feeding off, not grass. It's unusual, not impossible, but unusual to see a giraffe grazing. They are pretty much strictly browsers. Oh, that does look like a piece of grass, though. That might have been an accidental piece that that giraffe grabbed. Since it's just, oh, never mind, it fell out. I would guess, though, that it's most likely after some of the smaller bushes that are growing up there there you go small crotons and small acacias that's what they're really after of course it's worth bending down even if you're as tall as a giraffe if you can get su something succulent and young
<laughs> Auntie Watcher, you say that they walk like royalty. They are unbelievably graceful animals. And even when they run, they look as though they're running in slow motion. And it's a very deceptive run because you don't realize just how fast they're actually moving. They cover such large amounts of ground in one stride. So they canter forward. And of course, when your legs are two meters long, it's very easy to run fast, but they do. They walk with such grace and poise. And even their walk looks slow and steady. It's not though, because their legs are so long, they do cover ground very quickly. And already they've deceived me as to how far they've gone. Arrogant Clay, you want to know if the giraffe spots can be used like a zebra's stripes as a mean of, means of identifying them. Yes, absolutely it can. And I know that a lot of our viewers can actually, and I, I found myself doing it as well before I left Juma, I found myself identifying individual giraffe in just that way. That and a combination of unique scars and patches on their skin. I'm just gonna get us back to the giraffe. I just wanna make sure I'm not gonna crash into another car. But we could identify individual giraffe just in the way that we identify individual leopards. It is entirely possible to do that from their spot patterns. Each and every single one will be unique. Sometimes they have little hearts in their patterns. So it is very much like a fingerprint, just like a zebra's stripes or a leopard's spots. And in the case of these triple skirchy giraffe, it does indeed. Kirsty's absolutely right. It looks exactly like puzzle pieces, the spots on their skin. There we go, another one bending down to browse off the bushes closer to the ground. Does look like puzzle pieces. I'm just gonna have to shift a bit, sorry Senzo. There we go. We can have a closer look at her skin. Now, Rianan, you want to know what species of giraffe we get out here. We get the Maasai giraffe with their very, very unique spot patterns. One of the things I would love to see as well is the Rothschild giraffe up a little bit further to the north of us. But out here we see the Maasai giraffe. The only major difference, apart from the spot patterns, which obviously look quite distinct, and a lot more, I think the edges of the spot patterns are a lot more jagged, the major difference that I've noticed is the way that the bones on the top of the head protrude far more clearly, especially in the male giraffe. You don't really see it in the female. That's, they don't need it. So you won't be able to see it as clearly on this individual. We also see them far more often. I guess because it's more open. Oh, yum. Whatever that giraffe is eating, it is well and truly enjoying. Savoring each bite. That's a very cool screenshot. Are you enjoying that breakfast? <laughs> now, Amita. Our eight-year-old viewer who watches regularly, which I think is absolutely fantastic. You say that their bellies are so round. Oh, very, very well spotted, Nita, because I'm pretty sure that this female giraffe is pregnant. That's why her belly is even rounder than normal. So all giraffe have nice round bellies, healthy giraffe, but she's particularly big because she's growing a baby inside of her. I'm almost certain that she's pregnant. She's not at the late stages yet, but she's definitely going to have a calf in the next few months. 
Imagine watching a live giraffe birth, everyone. I'm sorry, Curse. My radio has fallen down. I'm not hearing you clearly. I think what I'm hearing is Jeffrey in Texas wanting to know how often the lions out here will hunt giraffe. I imagine it happens more frequently than somewhere in the Sabi sand. Of course, lions do hunt giraffe in South Africa, and I've seen quite a few giraffe lion kills. I would hazard a guess and say that it does happen regularly here, especially because there's quite a few large prides. And the larger the pride, the more mouths there are to feed, and the larger the prey species that they tend to go after. If I were a lion, I would actually often chase giraffe around here because there's so many rocks that it might be a very clever technique to actually chase them up against the rocks of the mountains where they can't keep their footing. That's something that the lions in the Kruger National Park have learned to do by chasing the giraffe onto the tarred roads where they start to slip and then they fall down. It makes hunting them much, much easier. We could even end up seeing a giraffe lion hunt at some point in the future. Could easily happen. There are some enormous prides out here. The Paradise Pride, for example. I don't think it's going to be likely in the next few months, though, because, of course, the wildebeest are on their way. And who needs to go and hunt something like a giraffe, which is quite dangerous, when you could basically just wait for the wildebeest to just jump into your jaws, which is what the lions are going to be doing over the next few weeks. The wildebeest are on their way. They're still mostly around the Sand River towards Tanzania, but they're getting here. The zebra have already arrived. Oh, there's lots to look forward to.